channel. Oh, the critics are going ballistic as GOP pedals notorious ACB t-shirts. Now my filters block it, but I'll show you on this page. That's what it looks like. Notorious ACB. And you can see they completely borrowed the, notor the uh, Notorious RBG. All they did was just change her face and the letters. Not to be confused with uh, who Kamala Harris called her the Notorious B.I.G. The, uh, I don't know if it was today or not, but I just seen the post that they did. So anyways, yeah, there it is. And they're all cranky about it. Critics on Twitter, because where else would you find critics? Oh, why do people go on that channel? I do not mess with Twitter. I don't. It's like, bleh, people are crazy over there. Critics on Twitter were aghast. See, they're aghasted. Who wants to hang around people that are aghasted? On Saturday, as the GOP peddled its latest product, a notorious ACB t-shirt ripping off the hard-earned and respected nickname of late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. May she rest in peace. So, thank you, Yahoo News, for cranking in all that hard-earned, respected, um, in your straightforward news with no slant. <laughs> right. The shirt went on sale just minutes after President Donald Trump formally nominated Amy Comey Barrett. Now, which makes you wonder, what went first? Those notorious uh, Amy Barrett shirts or the hit pieces on Amy Barrett from the DNC? It's a tough call for which actually hit the, pr the pages first. This shirt was posted on... Okay, I don't care. Look, I'm going to go over and show you the picture. Here we go. There's the new story. Whatever. All right, now... What do I have to say about this? I'll tell you what I have to say about this. First off, I'm a little shocked that D-Day Cobra didn't cover this. This is totally up his alley. And I was waiting for his video, because a lot of times I don't make videos, because, you know, you got a Cod Daily who does the same stuff that I do. Uh, not the same stuff, but the same genre. And D-Day Cobra, also known as Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. And so if they do them first, it's like, eh, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to crowd the market. But they didn't do it, so I'm like, oh, I guess I better get on it. All right, so here's my thing on this. First of all, whatever happened to the concept of recognizing that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery instead of constantly complaining and being offended at everything? As Rush Limbaugh has pointed out many times, it must be exhausting to be on the left and be offended all your waking hours. Holy mackerel, do you people have no opportunities to feel good? I mean, really, never? Darn, that's got to suck. Oh, well. So, yeah, I just want to throw that back in their face, which is, you're allowed to feel flattered, not offended, that we completely ripped off your icon and everything. We wouldn't have done it if we thought it was slimy. You never seen... I shouldn't say never. I've never seen pictures of Trump with that obnoxious red, puke, yellow, and blue that they did for Obama's poster. So, yeah. And let's face it. If you're the one that came out with the original, everybody's going to know it. They're going to know that you're the original. And so everybody's going to look at this and know, eh, you're a ripoff. And it is. So why be offended? Why not go, geez, you guys are just lame old copycats. That would make more sense. But again, that's not what Twitter does. Twitter doesn't do that. Twitter's like, no, we have to stomp our feet because we're too lazy to go out and actually riot like everybody else. <laughs> Okay, and now to end this on a serious note instead of a goofy note, let's go back to their complaining. Okay, so here's what I want to throw in on this, which is the idea that the Democrats currently think that Supreme Court justice hearings are strictly to slander and malign the candidates, which they've been doing since, thank you, Joe Biden, since the Bork hearings. That's all they've done. Go back and look at the records of when the Republicans put up a candidate and how they're just mercilessly trashed. And not on the record. Not on their record. No, just on, let's face it, Roe versus Wade. Okay, because, you know, let's not forget what Roe versus Wade is for. It's to eliminate the future child of a mother. So if you're okay and you celebrate eliminating the child from a future mother... You're going to be kind of okay with just trashing any other uh, living human being, you know? Oh, we didn't make it in the first trimester, or the second trimester, or the third trimester. Oh, you're 45? That's okay, we can still come after you. And they do. None of this would matter if 
if we understood that judges were there to follow the law, it wouldn't. And over on PBS, you guys know I watch PBS because I rail about it constantly. I hate that show so much. Now, why do you watch it? Because I need to know what the enemy's thinking. And more importantly, I need to see what they're not telling the viewers. They're not telling the viewers on PBS NewsHour that all of the stuff on that shooting... Oh, I can't remember her name. Isn't that terrible? There's just too much, too much crazy stuff. But the shooting where, where everybody, you know, the latest riot martyr that, um, I'm trying to remember it, Brianna, Brianna Taylor, that PBS never reported that everything they'd reported prior was baloney. Mm -mm. And they, and if you watch that one video I put up, oh my gosh, they really did introduce their show, and I made a 12-minute clip of it, where they're saying, a mostly peaceful protest with two cop shot. Wow! How is that not Saturday Night Level? Saturday, Saturday Night Live level. I need to get more sleep. I was up really late last night with those lessons I told you about on the other video. Anyway, so, no, th this desecration, and as I invited you before, look at how the Republicans' candidates are treated that go up for the Supreme Court, and then go back and look at how the Democrats are treated. And I understand from a moral or Christian point of view that we need to be on the up and up at all times. I do. But by golly, let's skip Christianity for a minute and go back to the Old Testament. David didn't become the king of Israel by playing nice nice. He really didn't. And he is the most revered person in the Old Testament. And he didn't do it by being nice nice. And if you look at most of the revered people in the Old Testament, they didn't do it by being nice nice either. That whole nice nice thing started with one guy and he landed up on a stick. So, I mean, it's got its pros and cons, okay? Not to get too religious into that. I'm just saying. You, yeah. Okay, so we're nice, they're not. Okay, fine, but somewhere along the line, we gotta win this thing. Last time I checked, it's turn the cheek. Most people only have four. Some have had a little too much heat and I got a few more. But the point being, yeah, we, I'm not, it, it's weird, I'm caught in the, between a rock and a hard place. We shouldn't be violent, of course, I mean that, but we shouldn't be carpet mats. It was not right what they did to Kavanaugh. When Lindsey Graham exploded at the end, that shouldn't have had to wait to the end. It should have happened at the very beginning. There are Republicans on that on that same panel. And it's like, for Pete's sakes, do that explosion at the beginning. Because just like with these out-of-control riots, you have to nip them in the bud. Or you get the unbelievable joke of a circus that was Kavanaugh. And and there are certain Republicans that it's whispered about that they want that to happen to ACB because that Kavanaugh explosion cost the Dems four seats. I don't like using human beings as bait in front of sharks and alligators and crocodiles and Tyrannosaurus rexes and all those other ancient animals that we call Democrats. No, we should not be using our people as bait for them to tear her to shreds so that they can lose seats to show how obnoxious they are. That's, no, that does not make us better at all. And it's, that, no, no. Just pull a Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham at the beginning instead of at the end. All right, what else do I have? Oh, oh, okay, I'm gonna throw this in. For those of you that stuck around to listen to the rantings and ravings of somebody very sleepy and still has to pull out another lesson because that's what I do every day. Anyways, it's this. I'm all excited for the finals tomorrow of Trump against Biden for the first round of the finals. Somebody said it was a Super Bowl. Dude, I'm pretty sure the Super Bowl would be the election, not the debates. Anyway, as we go into this, and they start at 6 p.m. California time, which is relevant to me, and, and, oh, I don't get off work till six, and it takes me an hour to get home, so I'm, no, oh, it's gonna be killing me. Y'all are gonna be watching the finals, and I'm gonna be going, I'm not home yet. Oh, well, so I'm, Thought I'd throw that in, because I don't get to make these very much because of all this stuff. But there's my take on the whiners, the complainers, the dreamers, and me for the critics that go ballistic, because they're offended at everything. And they don't recognize, since uh, imitation is the most, most sincere form of flattery. Too bad, their loss, once again, speaking of loss, I hope this lady's everything they say she is, and I hope she gets on there and she doesn't pull a Chief Justice Roberts who rewrote who re-wrote Obamacare. Not okay with that. 
on either side. No, 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 no. Put the pin down, sir. You are there to decide. You are not there to scratch out and write in what you really meant to say. And as I was going to say about PBS before I so rudely interrupted myself, on PBS, on Friday night, they have their little chit-chat between lefty and far lefty. It was supposed to be lefty and righty, but it hasn't been in years. No, it's lefty and far lefty. And far lefty says, well, I don't mean to offend anybody here, but RGB, she was really awesome at legislating from the bench. I'm like, why do you wait till she's dead to admit that? Why don't you admit that all the way along, since you clearly like it and you said you were celebrating it? No, this is the problem. One side tells the truth, mostly, and one side never tells the truth. Yeah, I'm not putting a mostly in there. I'm just going, no, 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 they just, they just don't. And I could go off further on that, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the Supreme Court and cranky, 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 cranky lefties who just, they're never happy. How sad. Somebody said, and I'll throw this, I'll end it on a high note. Oh, oh bad joke. Um, yeah. So, no, somebody said yesterday, they said, a lot of people think 2020 is the worst year ever. But some, but for some of you out there, some of you, 2020 might have been the best year that you've ever had. Gary Lamb, who's nice enough to give me a little attention on my channel and get me quite a few more subscribers than I had before, this stands to be his best year ever because of what happened to him. Yeah, 2020 has its issues. But let's not kid ourselves. There were a lot of people out there that enjoyed those, those um, $600 a week bonus bucks. They admitted, after it was all said and done, that more of the country got a raise off of that than anything else. And that was a totally socialistic, communistic raise, and that's not necessarily good. But they did take away our jobs at the same time. But the point being, a lot of people made more money. No, let me rephrase that. A lot of people got more money because of that $600 a week bonus bucks. So they had more money. Yeah, I know it's got inflation now because that's just the way that works too. But the point being, think about your life. Think about it. Look at what happened in 2020. Did your marriage get stronger? If it didn't, I'm sorry. Did your relationship with your kids get better? Many people I know have all said their relationship with their kids is unbelievably better. They never got to spend time with their kids and their kids were treated like modern kids before then where they're like, oh, that's the little toy that I drive to all the different programs that I put them in and force them to do and they never get to sleep. And then I get on their case about doing their homework and everything else and that's the little robot I'm raising. Where now, I actually got to spend time with them, play games with them. So they really loved it. So think about that. 2020 has faced a lot of losses in life, and that's not fun. But every year faces a lot of losses in life. The biggest difference is we got to go to their funerals in the last one. We got to go to church and mourn together in the last one. But was 2020 so bad for you? Or did 2020 offer a lot of good things for you? It's just something to think about. Nobody else has asked that question all year long until I heard it yesterday. So I thought I'd pass it along because I was able to sit here and go, hmm, you know, those bonus bucks bought me new tires for my car that I hadn't had in eight years. And I drive like a grandma for a good reason. And my tread was fine, but they're like, dude, they blow out on the side. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So I was able to do that. And my job is messed up really bad but I'm in a position right now to help kids in a way that they need more than anything because the way they're being treated in California with the pandemic. So at least some of us are allowed to get in there and help them. And I'm lucky enough to be one of them. And so far they're enjoying it a lot and I'm doing my best to make sure they learn a lot as well. That, that part's trickier, but at least I get to do it in real life and not through a computer screen. So how's 2020 for you? Can you find the good things? And when you start finding the good things, are there more of the good things than you thought there were? And it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, 2020's got some some cataclysmic, like, Saturday, not Saturday. Yeah, okay, fine. Saturday morning or summertime popcorn movie thrills and adventures of, look, it's impeachment over a phone call. <laughs> wow, that's not going to sell. Um, and, and it's a pandemic and it's a lockdown and, and all of these crazy things that you can think of. But what about the good stuff? Holy mackerel. My relationships with my family is kind of awesome now. I really love being with, the, with, with all the people I'm with now. I appreciate it far more. And the list maybe goes on and on. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the future. And 
When you're watching the debate tomorrow, think of me doing my best to get home so I can see it too. I want to see. Oh, I hope it's not like Tyson where he knocks him out in the first round. That's gonna, oh, I'll miss the whole thing. Uh, see you in the future.